Okay, hi, I'm Adele Moros. I've been an instructor here at the Bethel Senior Center for probably more than 25 years. I shouldn't say things like that, but anyway. What I wanna do today is give you a little bit of a relaxed introduction into how you can get yourself going again with painting in watercolor. Hopefully we'll do some more videos later on with some other mediums. Now, if you're right-handed, I want you to put your equipment on your right-hand side. That means your water and your paint. I have a palette where I put everything out. That's what I use for watercolor. If you have to keep stopping to squeeze out your paint every two minutes to put it, oh gee, I'm already wearing my own paint, um, to, to put it out all the time, what you're going to end up doing is wasting a lot of time and interrupting your train of thought. So have everything out and ready to go before you get started. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna have a pencil, possibly an eraser. I prefer not to do too much drawing if I don't have to. Um, but I do have the equipment for doing it. I do have erasers, I do have pencils. I'm not too heavy into drawing. Um, this was a piece that I took, did from a photograph of Ireland. Um, I have another, another one here, another photograph, so that you can pick what you wanna do. Now, one of the things you don't wanna do is you never wanna have something all the way across the bottom. So working just exactly as the photo is, is not always the right thing. This piece would look so much better without this and maybe cut off a little bit of that. There's a lot of information here that's not necessary. Um, we've got, I've been out painting on site a good deal of the summer. Some of these pieces are not finished. They could use a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of touching up. Um, that's a view from Putnam Park. This is from the Pleasantest, Pleasanty um, Park behind the police department in Newtown. There's a lot of little wonderful places to paint. This is across Ram's Pasture. We were on the bridge. Uh, let's see, this is Weir Farm from being in the field, looking back onto the visitor center. This is not finished, but it's a start. Everything with watercolor starts light and gets darker. This is another piece I did up at Weir Farm this week. And that was just a study of a tree. Now, all I want to do maybe is darken a little bit of the bark and it will bring this up. We try with watercolor not to get too, too involved. Um, Lisa has said that she likes this photo. Now, here again, what I just said about something all the way across the bottom, not necessarily the best deal but Lisa really likes all of this atmosphere down here. So we're gonna see what we can do and possibly break the wall, okay? So one of the things about things being straight is you really wanna try and put it on an angle. I'm going to let this wall break over here and this tree is coming up here. It's a double trunk and then it splits up here. I'm not worried about all of this little business in the background. It's the background. Well, what did I do? No. It's just okay. Good. All right. You'll have to forgive us. We're really working on trying to get this system down. Hat. Okay, I'm just drawing in here a little bit. Um, I know that I've got things coming off here. 
got a gorgeous branch coming here, but you never ever want to point something directly to the corner. So I'm avoiding the corner. I'm not heavily into drawing. Now back here, we have some hills and it was a very misty morning when I took this, this photograph. So there's a few hills back here. I'm not gonna worry about a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of foliage, trees, and all of this. Now, all of these lines can easily be erased later. I'm looking at my photograph. I'm drawing in. There's a little bit of a light area in here, a little bit of a rise where these trees are coming from, and another background line. And as you can see, none of these lines are actually, well, no, you probably can't see now that I look at that. Um, I do not draw too dark. I'm putting things in, and once I start to block in some color, I think you'll see it. Now, maybe you can see this sketch. Is that working? Okay, I'm not getting overly invested in this. Your photograph is a suggestion, only a suggestion. Now, one of the things I like to do with watercolor so that I don't get really hard, hard edges all the time is I wet the back of my paper. Now, for those of you who work on a block, sometimes you could take the paper off the block first. If you notice, I drew my picture before I got to putting some water on here. It doesn't matter if something got on the back of the paper. As long as I see no shine on the paper, I can turn it over. I'm working on the back of a canvas board because it is non-porous. And I really don't want to stain these tables that these ladies have spent so much time cleaning. It looks like you must have been in here with sandblasters, were you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to wet this entire piece of paper. Now, basically I'm gonna kind of work kind of damp and damp and this is a very easy project because of the fact that the tree is dark and these other things are pretty light so you're always working from the back to the front and from light to dark every single watercolor has to do that now if it's really dark you can say to me well everything is dark okay so put the lightest part of the dark in first and you can put it under a whole lot of area. Now, the other thing that I do, I'm gonna let that mellow a little bit. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush and I'm gonna kind of dampen up my paints. I don't want them totally saturated. I don't want puddles. But if you dampen your paint every time you use them, because these dry up in these little wells and that's what you want so that you can be portable with it. If you dampen your paint every time you use it, what will happen is that you don't end up with these crumbling, nasty, disgusting things happening in your palette. So every paint has its own personality. Watercolor, you have a lot more time than you think you do. Now, right now, this is buckling up just a little bit. So in order to get it to lay down, I'm just gonna add a little more paper, a little more water to my paper so that my paper is evenly saturated. Now, to make things easier for you, I will try painting this upside down. So, that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Now, basically, I'm just painting shapes. You were seeing it right side up. 
I mean, you were seeing it upside down because I was seeing it upside right side, uh, right side up. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to have a fun time today. All right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in these basic shapes and see what happens. Now, I have my trusty pieces of paper towel handy. Some people like toilet paper and we no longer have a shortage on that. So you can use that if you like to. <laughs> What's the matter, Rosemary? <laughs> yeah, you missed this class, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, I miss all of you guys too. There's nobody to make jokes with at home except the cats, you know. So I'm going to put in kind of a gray sky. And um, remember, with watercolor, everything dries about 25% lighter than it goes on. Hmm. Not with acrylic. Rosemary's an acrylic painter. So, you know, we'll, we'll address some acrylic stuff in some subsequent um, videos if this works. <laughs> this is the if this works, okay? So I want my sky to be a little bit more on the blue side than just whatever. I also know that I want to have a little bit, and this is called compost green. It's really a disgusting, can you see it from there? It's, it's not a great green to begin with, but if I mix this green with a little bit of burnt sienna, I'm going to get a very nice opaque, off in the distance kind of olivey color that's going to handle some of these other things. Okay. Such a tiny bit of paint you use. It's, yeah, you don't need tons of paint, but this is going to be nice for over here. Now, Rosemary, if you want to just pull your chair up a little bit closer so you can, don't have to keep bouncing up and down, that works for me. That way you're going to be actually seeing what they're seeing. So I've also got a couple of yellows here. Now, this yellow is a cool yellow. It's lemon yellow. Whoa. Um, don't think I'm going to use a lot of that, but... I've also got a cad yellow medium and a cad yellow deep over here, which if I put it with that is not so bad. Then I'm gonna come over here to my yellow ochre and I also have a little bit of raw sienna in the same thing. One's opaque and one is transparent. So there's some more colors. So we're trying to get all of these yellow things going without being too obnoxious to begin with. We like this green. And then we've got a little bit of that green with a little more blue back in here. So what I've done is I've gotten myself kind of set for just about everything I want to put in here. Okay, let's see, you can see that a little better. Okay, you've got, how about move over to, we'll move this a little bit so you can see the application. Now that you've seen how I pre-mix a bunch of colors, now, when you don't pre-mix, what happens is you're constantly losing train of thought. One of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this roll of paper towels and I'm just gonna roll it over this so that I have damp, but not puddle. Don't want puddles. Now, damp, paper is always going to give you a soft edge and that's one of the things we want especially in the background this gray as i said is semi-opaque and yes i'm going right over my tree trunks because if i stop and and make sure that oh i have all of these tree trunks and look i'm not just going in one direction everything goes when your paper is damp like this no problems now i think i would actually like to have a little bit of sunshine coming through my area here through the fog and if you notice the fog is a little lighter on one side and a little darker on the other. 
having that variety is good. So when you sit there and whine at me and say, oh, I, I ran out of the color. No, you didn't run out of the color. Fate said you, it was time to get rid of some of it, that's all. So if I decide that maybe I want to have a little bit of light coming, you're laughing at me, you think, Okay, this is the way my demos go. You should go to all my demos. Okay, I'm going to pull a little bit of light out of this. Just a little, not anywhere else, but sort of like it can warm up my tree a little bit. This, the, the day is coming up. Now you see I had a hard edge here, but because of the fact that this paper is damp. It's creeping in and it's getting soft. So maybe now I'm gonna put in a little bit of a distant hill. Here and there. And we wanna make sure that we leave space for these yellow trees that are coming up. So even though I put that in there, Look what I can do. I can just blot it out because my paper is saturated. I can blot out what I don't want. I'm gonna put a little bit more blue over on this side for distant stuff. And I'm gonna let a lot of it kind of touch the sky over here to keep it nice and soft and misty and over here it's going to touch a little bit and that's what helps make it misty is that the sky and the landscape are touching each other they're intermingling with the paint if you really get all uptight about the fact that i left some stuff where the tree is going to go I can just take a clean part of my paper towel and blot it all out, okay? There is a reason that I nag about wet paper. Now, here I'm gonna put in some of this background, a little bit green stuff. A couple little pieces showing through the background of the trees maybe down in here a little more dark just a little more i can also add just a little bit of, ooh that's too much but you know what just do it a couple more times nobody's going to know the difference it's my painting it's my painting i can do as i please if i want to lift a little of that out I just go back and touch it up. Now, here we've got a little bit more of this golden stuff, but I still need to get a little more background in. So, um, down in here, there's some more darker green just above this lawn. And the lawn is really where I can use this color and this that's left over from here and I'm gonna put that lawn in there where the sunlight is coming in. I'm gonna let the lawn break right to the bottom of the page. And there we go. So I'm blocking in, this is called blocking in. And yeah, this time I stopped at the edge of the tree. I'm gonna come over onto this side and there's the rest of the lawn or the field or whatever it was that I stopped my car in the middle of nowhere to take a picture for. All right, I'm gonna put just a little more yellow right in there, just to make this just a little more interesting in this area versus over here. Over here, I can come back in and put a little more um, darker green. I'm gonna to start to put some more dark greens in here not the color I want. So now I'm going to take some more of this compose green or let's use what most of you have is sap green. I'm going to take some sap green and I'm going to mix it with my favorite burnt sienna. 
and now I'm going to get a much more natural green. Green is one of those colors if you fail to add some darker stuff, what's going to happen is if you fail to add browns to greens, what's going to happen is that your green is going to look like something that came right out of the tube. You're not going to be happy with it and you're going to be very disappointed in everything that's going on. So now I'm bringing up some of these darker greens into the atmosphere area over here. I'm going to pull up a couple more here. Let them bleed up into where I put the lighter greens to indicate the mist. Maybe I'll have just a little bit of that coming through here. And look how beautifully all of those colors just play so nicely with each other. Yeah, there's a couple of little white marks. They're called holidays, but it's not going to really hurt anything. So I'm going to bring this down to the edge of my light lawn. I'm going to bring some of this into here. I'm going to bring a little more right in this area. Now, here again, I want to push out a couple of places where I want to put in some orange and yellows and all of that good stuff. So when I do this with my damp piece of paper towel, well, actually my paper towel is dry, my paint is damp. So if I got a little holiday, all I have to do is just touch it with the corner of my brush. Now, I like using a flat brush because it does more than one thing. It's got this little point on here, or it's got a big space over here. So that's why I use a flat brush, because I'm just plain lazy. So, you know, why go pick up something else if you don't have to? So I'm gonna have a couple more little areas where there's a little light and holiday and all of that other stuff. And we will see how far we get. Now, I'm seeing over here, we have a bit of an orangey, burnt sienna kind of, area of some kind of tree or something in here a lot of this area just above let's see we have some lawn some light lawn and then we have kind of this area of uh you know a little bit of ground cover where some of these leaves have started to fall and that's why this is dark in here now this is i'm charging this i just tapped in a little bit of dark brown right into that orange and that's called charging now i want to bring a little more light just in here now when i put a yellow into a green area you'll notice the yellow pushes the green away that's because this yellow is opaque if you buy a tube of paint that says hue that won't happen. So I'm just knowing what my paint does and knowing what all of these other things do. Now I'm also seeing that there's a bunch of kind of little rocks or something in between these trees. So I'm going to let that, you know, just sit and dry up just a little bit so that, um, and I'm going to pull across the bottom of this with a dry brush to keep that from bleeding any farther down. A dry brush is really nice. I'm wiping it on a paper towel and I'm just stopping the bleed when I want to. I can do anything. This is my piece of paper. My piece of paper. Okay, so now we're talking what's going to happen when we get, oh look, that's a pretty nice gray up here, isn't it? putting a little bit of leftover yellows up into this gray, just a little to indicate a little bit of a, a sunshine thing. If it starts to dry up, you can dampen your brush and kind of push back. It's still 
mellow enough to do that. You can just back brush it. Okay, now I think I want to have just a tiny bit more of yellowish coming in here and I'm back brushing it up into that damp area. So once I start to get to the point where I can see where I'm going, here's just a little more blue to bring some of this green up just a little more. I'm going to charge. Remember what charging is? Charging is, we're all doing that on Amazon, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> So time to cut up the Amazon cards. Okay. I want some darker greens and browns and stuff down in the bottom here. So I'm charging it in. I'm just tossing a little bit of stuff around. I've got some brown on the other corner of my brush. And that's not going to hurt anything because I'm going to put in a couple little indications that some things can be just a little bit different and actually when you go from one area to another what happens is that you get this absolutely wonderful surprise about what's happening so i can see right here these are a little too even they're evenly spaced gee how did i get to be symmetrical i don't know so i'm just moving them around a little bit in order to keep the um the balance asymmetrical. All right, so I can continue to charge in here just a little bit if I want to, but what I really want to do right now is go down to where the rocks are. Now, I keep getting things like, oh, what color is a rock? Well, it's everything. So I'm still working right in on top of all this other mess I have because it's going to make everything exceedingly coordinated. It's going to make things feel like they live together. Now, most grays are two opposites on the color wheel. So one of the grays that I'm probably gonna get here, okay, yeah, hold that up again. How's that doing? You wanna hold this up too? Now you can see the silhouette of the tree. You can see exactly where the tree is going to go and where some of these other or yellows and oranges are going to go in here too. But already, because this is so much lighter up here than down here, we're getting depth. Okay. Now, the more times that I can go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, or a color change or from a cool to a warm, the more variety that happens within this painting, the better it's gonna be, the more attractive it's gonna be. Now, um, I put blue and, what did I, blue and brown together and I got a gray. Now, another way to get a gray is to put the opposites of the color wheel together. Now, here is yellow and I just dipped this into purple. And now I'm getting another kind of gray neutral a gray can be anywhere from a brown to a really black and white gray. But what we want to do is we want to have enough things going on in that wall so it's not boring. Now here I put a little bit of red. I'm going to go right up into that green. And there's another kind of stuff. So let's just make some rocks. and my tree is in front of the wall. So I'm gonna haphazardly make some of these rocks along here. And then I'm gonna come back with maybe a little more purple versus the yellow, but it's still there. And I'm gonna overlap some of these other colors. Now I wanna feel if this is cool enough you can tell by the temperature of the paper whether you can get a crisp edge or not. 
if the paper feels cool, but not damp, then I can get a hard edge. Here, it was not quite cool enough and I got a bleed, a little bit of what's called a blossom. But it is what it is and I'm gonna live with it. So now I'm gonna put in maybe a darker gray up here, some over here. There's nothing wrong with a bleed. There's nothing wrong with having your watercolor paint take off because a lot of these unexpected little things are gonna be what's really gonna make this work. See, now I can, I can get a hard edge with my brush, but oh, there's even a better thing to make rocks with. And I almost forgot about it. So, let me find my, we've talked about credit cards. Yeah. Okay, I am going to throw a whole lot more color into this. And it's going to be pretty raw color. And you're all gonna suck your breath in because if I did it on your paper, you'd die. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So I'm having fun. I hope you guys are. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put a lot of color on here. A lot, a lot, a lot. And here's hoping this works. Because it might not. Now, I can take this credit card, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it sort of like you use a spatula in the kitchen or a squeegee. And I've got different size cuts on the edge of this credit card. And I'm going to think about where are my rocks. So I'm going to push the paint and scrape it off and I may have waited too long, but we'll see what happens. Now, what's gonna happen is where I made these little hard marks, am I splashing you? Probably. <laughs> All right, where I've made these little hard marks and dug into the paper just a little bit, I'm going to get some hard edges so I'm really having just random random rocks piled up on here I'll probably let this dry a bit before I go back into it that worked a little bit better I but we will muddle through okay yeah, it's starting to look like rocks This one is a little too purple, so I'm going to scrape that off. 
what I'm looking for is that we have a bunch of hard and soft edges, some planes, and I guess it's starting to look like a stone wall. Not for sure yet, but it's getting there. Now, I actually have to clean my palette. Oh, how's that gonna happen? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna wipe this across and come over here. Oh, Lisa, don't even bother to give me that. Okay. That industrial stuff. Okay. No. It doesn't, it doesn't play nice. So I have used my uh, softer paper towel to wipe this off and I'm still getting it on the table. I tried not right, to. We'll take care okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting in these background trees. Okay. We've got a little bit of background tree going. Um, we've got a little bit of some darker stuff, just a little coming in above that. little bit of shadow in there and one of the things that I want you to really understand is that you really do not want to have everything match so if you lost your color a little bit don't worry about it just put something else in there as long as you are consistent you see I'm going from one side of the tree to the other side of the tree as long as you're reasonably consistent all of this will work itself out now, I forgot what I was going to put in there, but, um, okay, how about just a little bit of sunlight? And maybe just a little bit over here. Always err on the side of color, not on the side of gray. So, now we're going to put in some yellows and some orange and some autumn colors because oh autumn's on its way i know some of this year has felt like it's the longest year on the face of the earth and i can't wait for it to be over so my paper is cool i can put my hand on it nothing's coming up if i put my hand down here a little bit of purple will come up so i'm not ready to put anything in here but here i can put things in and worry about other stuff later so i'm going to put the brighter orange in first the brighter yellow i can add my darker browns and stuff over these other colors here again we're working from back to front and from light to dark and yeah i do this fast i do this and you can't necessarily do it but with practice you can do anything I can't type <laughs> and me trying to do things on the computer ugh. I mean it gets done but now yes this looks a little bright I know it does but remember what I said that it's going to dry darker and we want to have that contrast of front and back. So do not despair. I want this tree out here to be more subdued than over here. Because this is where I want you to look. I don't want you to come out here. So even if you have a photograph where out here is super, super bright, that's not necessarily what you want to do. Here we're gonna have more like a red gold kind of thing coming up. And of course, all of these trees are different trees. They don't all have to be alike. Some of this I'm charging in, some of it is just sitting on the surface a little bit some of it has dry edges some of it has soft edges and that's what you want to have happen you want things to be 
just a little bit different here and there. You don't want to have the same thing. You don't want boring. The last thing you want in a painting is boring. And as we know, come fall, the entire tree does not turn the same color all at the same time. The one lament I hear out of most of you is, oh, I didn't mix enough color. I didn't mix, it's not gonna be exactly the same. How do I get that? It doesn't matter. It really does not matter. You're gonna get, you're gonna do just fine. It's all gonna work out in the end. There's no problems. Just, you know, okay, I got that where I didn't really want it, but it's okay. Now, what's coming up in here? Okay, because there's a little bit more of this. But also look at the fact that my tree line is by no means even at all. Now, the other thing is, as I go back into the wall, and I want things to be much, much darker, um, I can, I want my paint, so far everything we've painted has been pretty puddly. Pretty much like if I lift up my palette, it's gonna run a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Now I want my colors to be more mid-tone, so what I'm mixing up is it's gonna be a little bit thicker. Now, this is a nice olive green. It's, uh, what is it? It's ultramarine and cadmium orange. I know that doesn't sound like it's gonna make green, but it does. So here I can put just a little bit more dark of this, but it's, you know, I'm thinking that's not quite as green as I want it. So I'm going to take a little more of the sap green and add into it. Greens are one of these things, you got to play with it. There's no two ways about it. It's not just going to jump off the palette and say, I'm done, or, you know, this is the way it's got to be. Now, as I'm putting these darker greens in here, and please note the fact that I do not over mix on my palette. I'm not trying to make everything uniform. Look at how much variation there is between here and here and here, and the same thing up here. Okay, maybe I'm gonna take some of this and put that into this to get another dark. And there's a couple more darks over in here because this is sh kind of, the, you know, the trees are shading a few things. So we've got some other things happening. And I can run it out. If I'm not running it out enough, I can just add a damp brush to the edge. And I want a little more dark over back here because that's gonna make some of this light show up just a little bit more and you see the more times I keep going light dark light dark light dark the better this starts to look okay Rosemary's doing a great job keeping up with me I say palette and she's right there <laughs> okay now now what I really have to do is I have to find the shadows in my rocks. So I'm gonna use some ultramarine and some purple to make a super dark dark. Now, if I add burnt sienna, and boy, you can tell I use a lot of burnt sienna, okay. So we're gonna use some burnt sienna. We're gonna use um, even some Viridian green some umber as long as it's dark it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're using dark paint there is no rule so these are all pretty dark and these are all pretty light so I'm using everything and here again 
it's not over mixed. It's kind of just, everything's kind of just slopped in there together. Okay. Because this way I have all of this to choose from. If I blend and blend and blend, I end up with a very, very boring picture. Now I'm going to look at this just a little more closely and I'm going to say, oh, there's a dark there and there's a bit of a dark in here and I'm seeing that there's a dark shape in here. But because I've scraped this with the credit card, the paint's only going so far. It's going to the edge of the scrape pretty much and stop. Now, I want to make sure that all of my darks are on the bottom of the rocks, not at the top of the rocks, nor do I want to outline a rock. I can have a whole rock that's dark, but never go all the way around it. So here's another big rock. I'm not terribly careful about how I'm holding the brush because this is all natural um, objects, natural pieces of things, and nature's not neat. So I can just kind of get things wherever. I see a couple little lights here. I'm liking the idea of the light but I don't want too much of it because the tree is starting to shade things as well. So now this bunch looks a little better than this. This needs a bigger rock right here. Make sure that all of your sizes are varied, that you're not gonna get stuck with just one thing. Now I'm gonna let that mellow just a little bit more. And, gee, should we put tree trunks in? Mm -hmm. sure. Is it about time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now um, this tree trunk, I'm going to use quite a bit of burnt sienna on the bigger part of it first, because I'm going to work even in my darkest area from light to dark. And I'm going to put this in so that it can dry down a little bit before I work over here so that this I can get more detail on. The more something is dry, the more detail I can manage. So now tree trunks, you kind of work from the bottom up. That's just the way God grew them and that's the way you should work them. Now, at some point, I may actually have to look at this. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, right side up, you know, because right now I'm still upside down. So, but what it tells you is if I can get this far upside down, don't paint the details. Paint the objects, paint the shapes. Now some things, some mediums, it's a little more difficult to do this with than others, but basically if you can learn to divorce yourself from the details and only paint and start with the shapes, you will do so much better. 
Now see, I'm charging into this and because I let all of this dry, I'm able to get stuff that's starting to look sort of like bark. Now also, don't give me a tree with this nice, soft ballerina type. <laughs> You're well, laughing, you've it. been there, both Jesus. of you. <laughs> yes, yes, this is not a ballet. This is, you know, every, every time a little twig bra breaks off a branch, it makes a nub, it makes an angle. Tree trunks are very angular tree branches are pretty angular. Maybe a couple of little saplings in the spring or not, but for the most part, trees are pretty, uh, you know, rough and, and they've got hard edges and they're not absolutely perfect. And, you know, you've got a, a thing here like where a branch fell off. Or, I mean, that was just a mistake in the paper, but I <laughs> played with it. Uh, so now I can, I can take the edge of this brush and do some other things. Now, I can't have this this thin in here and have this this thick up here. I have to constantly make sure that all of the um, appropriate widths happen. And I will probably do a lot of that when I turn this right side up again, just so that I can see what I did. Now, basically all I'm using on this right now is some browns. Also, do not have all of these look like a fountain that are perfectly, perfectly symmetrical because that's not going to help your case at all. Now, even here, I have a few branches that are coming this way. Some are in front, some are behind. They're not all just coming out of one side of the tree, folks. They, you know, they come all different places. So I think I'm gonna just hold off on this for just a minute or two. Oh, I like the way that dark looks. Also, please note, I go back into this numerous, numerous times. I am not trying to be able to get this all in one absolute perfect stroke. There is no perfect anything in this world. Boy, this year I ought to taught you that. So I'm going to bring this branch coming off into here. I'm going, this can be here. This can come down this way. We'll have this kind of hang out this way like a knot hanging off here. Uh, I'm not liking that, but anyway, we'll, we'll play with it. Probably getting to the point where I have to look at this. Now, what I'm doing right now, I can get the feeling of bark. This is called dry brush. My paint is very, very dry. My paper is almost dry. I may or may not be able to achieve this. I'm laying the brush pretty much down. 
and I'm dragging it along here and it's not touching the surface every time I put the brush down. Certain things are not actually being addressed every time I put this brush down. It's, there's a lot of skip a beat kind of thing going on in here. And that's a way to help make that bark texture. Let's see if I can do this, holding this up just a little bit. Let's see, where are we? About down in here. And now you can kind of see where the brush, where not, it, it's not grabbing the paper everywhere. See that? Let's see. <laughs> oh well, just throw it at her. Um, but that, that's kind of what happens. So it's a way to make texture. Do you have to do it? No. I'm just showing you a technique while I've got this in motion. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush and see if this one plays nicely. And I'm going to bring up some, this brush looks horrible. Um, I can use even a brush this wide, but if I use it on its side, I can put in some tree trunks. So I'm also going to have this one just kind of damp so that I can lift off a little bit of a tree trunk so that what's going to happen is it's going to say that it's coming behind a lot of foliage. Just getting rid of that white holiday right there with just a little bit of dirty water. Now, for some reason, I had a lot of tree coming up in here in the drawing, but I'm not sure I want it. So sometimes that accident is really not such a bad thing. I don't know, let me look at it this way. In the drawing, I had just a little bit more kind of a grayer, off in the distance a bit. Tree area, don't know if I like it better or not, but there it is. Eh. Could be worse. And of course I put my hand in there, so now I've got to put something over it. It's called the happy accident. We all make those. There's nothing wrong with a happy accident. Now, so that this one's not a lie, I'm coming over here and doing the same thing. Now, if I mix purple and burnt sienna, 
I'm going to get something that's almost black, but it has a lot of um, warmth to it if I mix it thick enough. So I don't want to use black. Even a photograph will photograph everything as being black. Once you get past a certain saturation, it's going to say that everything is black. And that's not what you really want to have. Um, I'm going to get out what's called a rigger brush so that I can do these finer branches. A rigger brush is a long, floppy looking thing, and I can kind of work from the bottom up. And because I can't really control it, I will get a much more natural effect. A couple little ones lighter back in here. soften a couple of things. Now see, all I'm doing to soften things that felt just a little hard is going back into them with just a little bit of damp water. If I want to have maybe just a little more increase in some of these, I can put it back in. But I still have not put in all of this foliage that's in the front on the big tree. So now I'm going to come in here with some more burnt sienna, a red, because these are kind of reddish orange, and kind of just push a little paint around. I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm crossing branches. I know that so many of you have this thing about, oh, I spent all of this time drawing this perfect branch and I can't cover it up. So now I'm covering up some branches. So let's, we'll, we'll get back to where you can see it. How's that? got some a little more red
Now see, the minute I start putting in these darks over the front of these lights, everything starts to go back even further. Maybe a little more foliage on this tree than what's in the um, photograph, but I still need to put a few more branches in here. Now here again, I'm charging a little bit. I'm charging some lights into some darks and some darks into some lights so that there's a modeled effect going on with these leaves because if I don't, it's just going to be boring. But it doesn't really make that much difference whether I'm charging the light into the dark or the dark into the light as long as multiple things happen. and that we keep some of these edges soft and some of them dry, some of them hard, some of them more interesting. And now I guess I still need to connect some of these branches to what I'm doing. So I'm not happy with that, but. I let it get a little too dry, but I just wet it up and now I'm going back into it a little bit and it'll, it'll be happy again. How are we doing on time? I'm way over, right? Oh, you're fine. Keep going. <laughs> It's, it's going to be a two-part series, huh? <laughs> it could be. You know, it could be. There you go. All right. So, as I said, I want to get something that's almost, almost, almost black, but not black. So, we're going to use some burnt umber, a little bit of blue. Every place I made a little mark that's almost like a joint is where I can take another branch out. But 
but you want to make sure that your branches all connect to something. You don't want to have them just hanging out here. They have to have an anchor someplace. Some of this is coming off as dry brush because of the fact that the paper is dry and my paint is fairly dry and that's fine because it's going to look more like bark. Don't worry about crossing one thing over another. For Pete's sakes, that's the way they grow. One thing's in front and one thing's in back. And I'm sure if you look at the photograph and you look at what I'm doing, these aren't all exactly where they were. And I defy you to go back and find which tree I photographed <laughs> and yell at me for it. Now, some of these I'm starting all the way down at the bottom of this tree so that we get the feeling that a lot of this is bark. Now the other thing that I do when I'm painting is I may stop on this in a few minutes. I probably will put it away for a day or so and then come back and look at it and say, ah, what should I do differently? Should I add more? Should I do a little bit more um, dark or light or whatever it is? I don't just um you know take it off and frame it and th and say i'm done i have to look at it and be honest with myself as to what works and what doesn't now the one more thing i'm going to address is a couple of these rocks at the bottom and i want to put just a little bit of um couple of hard edges here and there. want the tree to be a little bit more of a silhouette against the stone wall. Okay, it's as done as it's gonna get for right now. Uh, there you go. Even though 
Beautiful. All right. And at this point, I'd say questions, but... <laughs>